Next is the foam repair. So it looks like somebody made an attempt somewhere in the past to do a foam repair. So let's go ahead and clean this one up. Let's go ahead and clean up this mess, whatever this is. A bunch of nastiness. We have to get rid of the cancer. So this is what I use. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll see that I just use a hacksaw blade. Simple, cheap, fast and efficient. No electricity required, not like a bread knife, like a lot of people always suggest in comments. So what we gotta do is get rid of the old one. Again, not rocket science. If anybody says this is rocket science and make it complicated, I don't know what to say. I like to use a high density or maybe even a medium density foam for this kind of work. So we'll just take a simple measurement. It looks like about right. If you notice, there's no tape measure involved. You'll notice that I put the two pieces together right away after putting the glue. That's because I want this foam to stick together. Some people say, no, you got to let it dry for five or ten minutes before you put the two halves together. Well, who are you going to believe? Actually, for soft pieces like foam, foam to vinyl, foam to fabric, I put them together right away. If you're putting something to a hard object like plastic or, or metal, then yes, you'll want to have it dry for about five or ten minutes before you put the two halves together. But we're not using plastic or metal. So this is where the artist in you comes, right here, is to shape the foam. I'm not sure if this can be done with a bread knife, electric bread knife. Maybe it can, I don't know, I've never tried it.
Now I'll take that same quarter inch scrim because it's got the nice heavy back on it. You know, I use the best stuff. This is really the best backing you can get. Um, don't uh, I guess you could use the, the the netted backing, but you know what? I don't go cheap on my customers, so this is what I use. You can use anything you want. I'm just showing you how I do it. Okay, it's time to put the cover back on. So usually with this type of design of an insert, you have your three, this has the plastic um, listing. So there's different designs. There's wire listing, there's uh, listing with springs, listing with string, but anyway, that's what this one is. You always start with the center right here first. This one here pushes down into the little plastic clip, like that. You can probably see it better right here. The orange plastic clip. Not all cars and trucks have this, but some of the later models do. The older models don't. Just like that, they just press right in. No hog rings required. Then you just fold over your Nissan cover. Now I just got to go and install it back on the truck. Like you saw before when I took it off, was the seat hook right here. There's a forward seat hook, a rear seat hook. And two sides, and that's really all there is to it. Well, this would be the end. Huh?